Hello! This week has been quite interesting for me and I really wasn't sure if I'd be able to put out a video. I live in the US so I didn't do too much work on the video due to the Thanksgiving holiday, but what made it difficult was also due to the fact that my GPU had issues. One day when I was returning to my desk from lunch, I realized that there was a really bad plastic smell in my room. I tried sniffing around my room to find the source of the smell and I realized it was coming from my PC. I then decided to open it up, hoping that it was coming from the power supply, but soon realized that it was being emitted from my GPU. The thing is, my computer was still able to detect my GPU, but one of the fans seemed to stop working, so I decided to RMA the unit since my GPU was still under warranty. The RMA process wasn't too bad, but it was still quite annoying since I've only used a GPU for around 2 years, and I don't tend to run any GPU intensive games or tasks. Hopefully, this unit will last longer and I won't have any issues anymore because based on what I've seen, it still seems to be kind of tough to buy a new GPU. Anyways, without further ado...
GMK Nightrunner is a set that was inspired by Cyberpunk 2077, which can be seen by the stylized font for the set name which matches the style of the title for Cyberpunk 2077. This set actually ran back in August of 2019, but is now making a return this December. The game turned out to be kind of a mess at launch which was quite unfortunate, but at least I think that the set does look really good. I'm usually not a big fan of neon colors, but I think that the neon accent and font works well with this set and suits the theme. Although the set does draw inspiration from the game, the novelties are more inspired by the cyberpunk theme as well as the name of the set. They don't look bad in my opinion and they do offer some nice customization, but I probably wouldn't pick up the kit myself. I do appreciate the work the designer had to put in to design the novelties though, because they don't appear to be inspired by the game. Unfortunately, there won't be much support for people who use other layouts or need language support, so if that's a deal breaker, you might have to look elsewhere. Overall, I think that GMK Nightrunner is a really nice looking set with dark colored keys and a neon yellow accent that makes it really stand out. If you are looking for something cyberpunk themed or a darker set with a nice pop, I think that this set is one you should look into. EPPT Yukihana is another Hololife set, inspired by the VTuber Yukihana Lami. There have been several Hololife keycap sets such as Cat Comet, GMK A, and GMK Taco, and I'm sure there are more to come. There are two base kits that will be sold for the group buy, a Hiragana base kit, as well as a Latin base kit. I personally think that the Hiragana base kit makes more sense thematically, but there are people who don't like sub legends, so it's nice to have an alternative for those people. The novelties seem to be inspired by the character and probably some general winter themes, and I do think that they look nice. I'm sure that some other fans might have some complaints about the novelties and how there were some designs that the designer could have used, but at this point, it's definitely too late as the set is about to go live for group buy. One complaint that I did see in the Geek Hack thread was the 40s kit as a lot of people complained that it lacks proper kitting. I've never used a 40% board so I'm not too familiar with what keys are needed, but it does kind of appear like the designer ignored these suggestions and just pushed on which is not a good sign. The choice does ultimately lie with the designer on what they want to do for their set, but I think for things like kitting, if you aren't familiar with a certain layout and people are trying to provide you with help and resources, you should at least give it a listen and see how you can improve your set. That being said, 40% boards aren't all that popular in the hobby though they do have a dedicated community, so it probably won't be a deal breaker for most people, but it's definitely disappointing to see. Other than that, there's a numpad kit, space bars, a macro UK ISO kit, and two Hibby Metal Artisans that will be going on for sale as well. The designs for the Hibby Artisans come from the Novelties kit, and I think that the designs that were chosen weren't the best, because I think that the flower novelty makes more sense. It's something that the character wears on her head and seems to be more of a symbol that represents her compared to a snow globe and a snowman. EPPT Yukihana is a set that is definitely targeted towards fans of Yukihana Lami, but I think it looks good so anybody who's looking for a blue theme set can look into it. I'm sure that some super fans might find things to nitpick about the set, and the lack of designer response to the criticism of 40s kit is a little disheartening, but overall, I think that the set is worth considering. The Angle is a TKL board designed by Vertex, a Chinese custom keyboard studio that is collaborating with Click Clack to bring their board to an international audience. I think that this keyboard is very simplistic, yet attractive looking. The weight looks cool with engraving on the back, and the little corner on the top of the board is a cool way of differentiating itself from other TKLs without being too extra. I do find the phrase engraved on the inside of the board to be a little cringy, but luckily, that will be hidden for the most part, so I guess it's not that bad. The angle is a leaf spring gasket mount board, which is a mounting style that I've tried before and I do enjoy a lot. It's supposed to provide a softer typing feel by providing more flex, and based on what some streamers have said, Vertex seems to be successful on this front. There is quite a bit of content out there for this board due to the fact that there are type tests on the interest check as well as a couple streams out there already, and from what I've heard, the sound profile of this board is pretty high pitched. The board is also pretty muted due to the fact that there's a silicon layer, so if you don't like muted boards, this might be a deal breaker. Personally, I don't really mind a muted keyboard, but I'm not the biggest fan of high pitched boards. Vertex has received feedback from other users as well as different streamers, so as of October 26th, they were working on improving the typing sound of the angle, and they also modified the angle such that the silicon pad wouldn't be required for those who don't like a muted sound profile. The angle will have five different color options, Crow, Lunar, Chainmail, Bianco, and Fog. They don't have colors like red, purple, or navy, which are very popular keyboard colors, but I think that these colors were probably chosen because Vertex had a specific look and design that they wanted to achieve with their board. Overall, I think that the angle is a really good looking board with an okay sound. It is encouraging to hear that Vertex is working on making this board sound better, but it's yet to be heard if those modifications will truly produce a better sounding board. 
The price for the angle has yet to be finalized despite the approaching group buy date. But the price for the Chinese group buy was around $441 to $456, which isn't cheap. The price is also predicted to rise due to rising material costs, so I'm predicting that the angle will potentially go for around $500 USD. This is quite a bit of money, so I would definitely check out all the content out there to be sure that you really like this keyboard before you buy. The Mammoth 75 is the next board to come out of Wutra Studios, the creators of the popular Icky 68 Aurora. The keyboard probably derives its name from the weight that has a sandblasted diamond cut mammoth design, but probably also from the massive knob on the top of the keyboard. I kind of like how it looks and it definitely makes the keyboard unique compared to most other keyboards that feature a knob, but it's definitely a personal preference. The board is also quite hefty and weighs 2.5 kilograms on belt, which translates to around 5.5 pounds. This is pretty impressive to me considering the fact that according to the spec sheet, the whole board is made of aluminum. Similar to most boards coming out nowadays, the Mammoth 75 will feature a gasket mount design to provide a softer typing feel. It will come with poron dampening foam, which is something that's really a matter of personal preference, but I guess you can always remove it if you hate foam. I have not heard a typing test of how the keyboard sounds without foam, so I can't say if the internals have been designed well for a foamless build. Wutra Studios is also planning on releasing more content for the Mammoth 75, so if you are curious about that, you can always request it and see if they record a type test. The Mammoth 75 will come in at $399 for a limited in-stock sale that Wutra Studios hopes to run before the middle of December, but for a full-on group buy after the in-stock sale is finished. The date hasn't been finalized for the sale and the price hasn't been announced yet for the group buy, so if you are interested, I would highly recommend joining the Wutra Studios Discord to keep up to date. Although I don't plan on joining in on the group buy, I do think that this is definitely something worth keeping an eye on. The design is quite nice and the price isn't too bad, so it's a keyboard worth considering if you're looking for a 75% keyboard.